again for another video. I don't know why that's my thing, but we're just gonna go with it. It's been a little while since I filmed, so I'm excited to get back on here. I will quickly add that it's almost 90 degrees still outside, even though it's 9 p.m. at night. So if I'm looking a little sweaty and out of breath during this video, that's why. I have to turn off the AC, of course, to film this. So we're just gonna, gonna go with it. Thank you for your patience. The other thing I will add that it's been a little while since I've been here on YouTube. However, I am active in my Facebook group. I do a weekly live every single Saturday. So uh, if you wanna keep up with me, definitely come hang out with me live over there. We have a ton of educational content. And then of course, I'm super active on Instagram, particularly my stories. I post almost daily on the Instagram stories um, and it's a great place if you're into bite-sized skincare content. I will do you know, little posts kind of covering uh, skincare ingredients, how to read ingredients lists, kind of debunking misinformation. It's a great place to keep up with me as well as kind of learn more about skincare, especially if like those big deep dives on the blog are a little overwhelming for you. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in here. As you can tell from the title of the video, this is gonna be an overview on microneedling. Now, again, I have protocols in our Facebook group guides um, where you know I, I break down all these treatments and how to do them. I've also done lives in the group. However, because I am answering questions and demoing in real time, they do end up being pretty lengthy, so they can be kind of difficult if you're wanting to refer back to them for the information. So I'm gonna be doing a series of demos here on YouTube, not just on microneedling, but on mesotherapy, chemical peels, and more. But before I do that, I think it's super important to kind of break down what microneedling is, because you wanna make sure um, before you go out and buy anything, that this treatment is appropriate for you, and also that you're, it's something where you can actually do it safely at home. So we're gonna cover all of that in this video, including you know various options for tools, products, sanitation, and so forth. And then the next video, we will do a demo. And then really quickly down below, go ahead and comment what you would like to see next as far as overviews and demos. You know, I could do microcurrent, I could do chemical peels, I could do mesotherapy, I could do IPL, and there's tons of options. So let me know what you wanna see first down in the comments below, and let's go ahead and get started. Before we kind of explain what microneedling is, I do wanna say that there is a lot of different perspectives on this topic, as well as kind of a general lack of education in this field. You know, even among professionals, you will see a lack of knowledge as well as kind of consistent protocols. Um, I primarily refer to Dr. Setterfield. He has a fantastic book called The Concise Guide to Dermal Needling. Now, I heard of this book from others in the YouTube space, and I am definitely not the only person who loves this book or who does microneedling content, so I will kind of add that little disclaimer. And I do think that Dr. Setterfield is a really great example of you know how microneedling has evolved since the start. I think that his protocols are the most conservative and the safest, and that's super important if you are needling at home. You know, I will also say though that I don't just refer to Dr. Setterfield. You know, I wouldn't feel comfortable just, you know, giving away his book for free. And I also just think it's really important to look at the research as a whole and to consider other perspectives. Dr. Des Fernandez is the really the pioneer of microneedling. He did all the initial research and really is the godfather of microneedling, if you will. He is a fantastic resource as well. However, a lot of his initial studies and tests, you know, really used microneedles at a very deep level in the skin and very frequently. What we know now though, is that you don't need to needle very deeply to get pretty much the same effect as far as collagen induction, which we'll cover more in a sec. And you also don't need to needle so often to also get a great result. So basically, I will be pulling from Dr. Setterfield and Dr. Fernandez and the, the research on microneedling as a whole and kind of discussing this topic with you guys. So what is microneedling? Microneedling is a treatment used in the aesthetic field to improve the appearance of the skin. In the medical field, they use microneedles to aid the delivery of drugs into the skin. This can be helpful because we can use this, this data and apply it to penetration of skincare ingredients. As far as the aesthetic side though, the main goal here is collagen induction. You know, we use these little microneedles and we kind of trick the skin into thinking that it's been injured. So done properly, we don't get the scarring and the more serious trauma. 
Um, but we get the wound healing cascade occurring. As a result of this, we get the skin remodeling and the new formation of collagen. This is why you'll hear people use terms like micro damage or micro trauma. That's because we're using these tiny little needles that are not damaging the epidermis. They're not exfoliating away the, the skin barrier. They're just creating these micro channels into the skin that you know trick the skin into repairing itself. And they can also be used for infusion, but that depends on the type of microneedling. Now, we have different types of microneedling. We have nanoneedling, which is not technically a true form of microneedling since it uses nanoneedles, where with cosmetic needling, this refers to very short needles that remain in the epidermis of the skin at the top layer. Now, I love cosmetic needling, but there is not a lot of research here, really almost none. You know, Dr. Sutterfield has done some case studies, but case studies are not considered really compelling research. So, you know, keep in mind that a lot of the research on cosmetic needling and nanoneedling are, it's not conclusive, and cosmetic needling really needs to be studied more. However, you know, I, again, I love this treatment. There's a cat sitting behind my chair. What we do know about cosmetic microneedling is that when you remain in that epidermis, you're using needles that are 0.3 millimeters or shorter, you basically have an abbreviated form of the wound healing cascade occurring. Again, that epidermal wound healing response. So because you're not getting deep into the dermis, that's the tissue that's actually vascular, you don't need to have inflammation occurring or you know some of these other more involved steps. Instead, you just have what's called re-epithelialization, which is very rapid. And the healing will kind of depend on how far you go. If you get into the basal layer and the basement membrane, which I'll pop a little image up here, then it can take a little bit longer, where if you stay above the basement membrane, it's even quicker. But you might be wondering, okay, if you're not getting into the dermis, you're not having the, wound, the whole wound healing cascade occurring, you're not getting the skin remodeling that, that's going to result in collagen formation, why do this? With the epidermal wound healing response, you're still getting the release of these growth factors. You know, we have growth factors involved in every single step of the wound healing cascade. This process begins the second that you breach the skin barrier. As soon as the skin barrier has been breached, um, you know, you get the release of interleukin-1, and this kind of starts the whole chain of events off. So the release of those growth factors is still beneficial to the skin. You can help thicken the epidermis, but we also are kind of finding out based on research on burn patients is that the epidermal keratinocytes can actually regulate the dermal fibroblasts. So even though we're only microneedling the top layer of the skin, we're not getting the skin remodeling that I talked about, over time, the keratinocytes can still kind of tell those dermal fibroblasts to make more collagen. So it's still potentially very beneficial, even if it takes a little less time. And you know, cosmetic needling can also be done more, much more often. You can do it once or twice a week. And you can use other ingredients with your cosmetic needling to really enhance that treatment. You know, what I really recommend, again, are those topical growth factors. You can also use copper peptides, where with medical needling, you have to be much more careful. Now, before we get into actual microneedling, I will quickly cover nanoneedling. Now, this isn't true microneedling because we're not using actual needles. Nanoneedles are these little cone-shaped tips that kind of look like pyramids, and you know they're not actually getting into the skin. They're kind of just disrupting the skin barrier a little bit, kind of moving the skin cells around, um, and the whole purpose here is infusion. You're not getting the epidermal wound healing response. You're not getting the, the, those benefits of cosmetic needling, but it can be a great way to infuse skincare. Now, I will note that there is even less research um, on nanoneedling than there is for cosmetic needling. Really, the only research is for the drug delivery side of things. With medical needling, you know, the goal is collagen induction, which is why you'll hear it referred to as CIT or collagen induction therapy. The goal is not infusion. Um, and sometimes people get a little confused about that. You know, I often hear like, what should I use with microneedling? You know, those are, those are things that you wanna do with cosmetic needling. Cosmetic needling has a benefit to the skin and you can infuse, you know, the appropriate ingredients. Medical needling, there is a higher chance of complication and risk here. There is the, the risk of infection, you know, scarring, um, foreign body granuloma response, which is when basically the, the body kind of responds to foreign material. You may use a high molecular weight HA for glide or sterile saline, but the goal is not infusion. So with medical needling, you know, we're using needles 0.5 millimeters and longer to get into the dermis of the skin. This is going to trigger the full wound healing cascade where we have the inflammation, proliferation, and maturation phases. 
you know, it's important to kind of have a general idea of this because this is kind of kind of inform, you know, your aftercare plan. You know, you have the inflammation for one to three days. After that, you'll get into your proliferation phase. And then again, the maturation phase, which, which is going to be your remodeling and your skin is going to be forming that new collagen. I think it's important to kind of note that you don't need to needle really deeply to get an effective treatment. And at home, you want to be as conservative as possible, you guys. And we are already in a, in a home environment, which is going to be far from sanitary. Most of us are not going to be trained professionals at home. So you really want to minimize the risk. And the good news is that the research Research really seems to indicate that you can you can just breach the, the, the dermis. You, know, you, you can focus on that dermal epidermal junction per Dr. Sutterfield. Basically, get the same result as far as the collagen induction. There is also a couple studies just showing that you know no matter how deeply you needle, you still get the collagen formation about 0.6 millimeters into the skin. And there's been a couple studies as well, kind of comparing one millimeter to two millimeter to three millimeter needles, and there was no difference in the benefits. So by needling deeper, you're just increasing the risk, and I highly recommend you know really being conservative and sticking to 0.5, unless you have an area kind of like the cheek areas where you want, where you want to go a little bit deeper. Now, the benefit of microneedling is mainly that collagen induction. As we age, we lose collagen in the skin each year, starting in our early 20s. Well, collagen induction therapy can be very helpful if for aging skin as well as kind of prevention. And microneedling can also be helpful for scarring, though I do recommend um, if you have more serious acne scarring and stuff of that nature, seeing a doctor. The type of scar is really what's going to determine whether microneedling is going to be effective for that. The scar can be tethered if it's a rolling scar. Um, there's a lot of factors essentially in whether microneedling will be effective and you really want a doctor if you're going to be getting really deep into the skin. Microneedling can be also helpful for hyperpigmentation in some cases by kind of improving skin function and the communication between cells. There can be a benefit there, but usually when combined with pigment inhibitors. The melanocytes, the cells that form pigment through a process called melanogenesis, are located deep in the basal the basal layer of the epidermis. That's the bottom layer of the top layer of our skin, if that makes sense. I'll pop up a visual. So because those melanocytes are located deeper, you know, topical pigment inhibitors might not all get all the way to them, and as a result, might not be able to properly disrupt the pigment forming process. So when we combine microneedling um, with a pigment inhibitor like transamic acid, it can help it get it deeper into the skin. And of course, you know, microneedling also has other benefits for hyperpigmentation as well. However, it is important to kind of note that, you know, if you have skin of color or you're prone to hyperpigmentation, sometimes you can get hyperpigmentation during the wound healing process. So microneedling could potentially cause more hyperpigmentation, kind of depending on your skin. So it's important to be very conservative and to really um, focus on really good prep. Really prep your skin for two weeks with a pigment inhibitor, and we'll talk about more of that, of that as we get into, you know, pre and post care. While microneedling is not a treatment for rosacea, it can sometimes improve the appearance. Rosacea has a vascular component, so when we go in there and we kind of thicken the skin, this can make redness and enlarged blood vessels a little bit less noticeable. With rosacea though, you'll definitely want to needle you know, much more conservatively and stay really shallow. I'm a big fan of microneedling because it really works with the skin versus against it. Now, treatments like microdermabrasion Research-wise, you know, haven't really shown very significant results for issues like scarring or, or photoaging, yet they completely remove the skin barrier and you have transepidermal water loss for several days afterwards. And they're really just not good for the health of the skin. And the skin barrier is absolutely essential for skin health. Um, and a lot of treatments that we see, you know, are just counterproductive to the health of the skin. You never want to get results at the, at the expense of, you know, skin health and function. This is not the case with microneedling. You know, you're not removing the skin barrier and you're kind of encouraging the skin to function better, right? You're releasing growth factors, you know, you're you're encouraging cell communication. You're you're using this the way the skin works. Um, and you're just kind of enhancing these processes to improve your skin. So for this reason, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a fan of anything that works with the function and, and, and anatomy of the skin. You know, I just think it's common sense, um, and I think there's also a lot of evidence here. So for the contraindications for microneedling, I am going to list them down below in the, in the description box as well as additional resources, because I do want to make sure that I cover them all, um, but I will kind of discuss the main ones really quickly. If you're pregnant, you would not want to needle without permission from your OB. You know, this is likely due to kind of the infection risk. Um, if you have broken skin, 
or active acne, you're not going to want a needle over those areas, again, due to, due to infection, um, as well as potentially kind of spreading the acne-causing bacteria around. Um, if you have an autoimmune disorder, you would not want to microneedle. You know, same goes for any more serious skin disorders, um, as well as someone who gets, you know, keloid-type scars. Again, you know, if you're in office with a medical provider, they can kind of analyze and look at your history, um, you know, and can determine whether microneedling is safe for you, you know, despite some of these issues that I've mentioned. But if you're at home, you want to be as careful as possible. But again, please refer to the description box where I will list additional information on contraindications. As mentioned earlier in the video, we have three types of microneedling, though nanoneedling is technically, you know, doesn't use needles, but we have nanoneedling, cosmetic needling, and medical needling. And you do have a few options as far as what tool or device you use for this. If you know you want to nanoneedle, then I do recommend getting a microneedling pen since you can get the nano cartridges. Another option though would be the Osmosis Epic Skin Tool, which is essentially a nano roller. Um, that is personally my favorite for nanoneedling versus nanoing with a pen, just because I find it much less irritating and a lot easier to use, but it's totally up to you. Again, for cosmetic and medical needling, you're welcome to use a pen. A lot of people recommend a pen over a derma roller, and you do see a lot of misinformation on derma rollers. This is, you know, the derma roller that I use. There is no evidence whatsoever that either is better. In fact, the derma roller actually has more evidence behind it. So, you know, please feel free to pick what you're most comfortable with. I do like to use a microneedling pen. And down below in the description, by the way, you can find the link to my Amazon store where I will include kind of my microneedling supplies and my favorites. But the advantage of the pen is you do get the single-use sterile cartridges, so I do prefer this for medical needling. This is the Dr. Pen A7, by the way. Where, you know, for cosmetic needling, I do prefer the Derma Roller, as I just think it's a little bit easier and quicker for your weekly cosmetic needling treatments. And if you're new to microneedling, I always suggest the roller. It's just very easy, um, there, and there is a lower cost commitment here. So if you're not sure whether microneedling is for you, you can spend $13 on a derma roller and try it out. And it's also going to be a little bit less uncomfortable for the person that's new to microneedling. So I typically will suggest kind of getting comfortable with this. And then if you want to get into deeper needling, then you can try out the pen. With the derma roller, just make sure that you get one like this one. Again, it's linked in my Amazon store. This one has real individual needles and they are stainless steel. A lot of these derma rollers that you'll find like on Amazon have stacked metal discs and they're just, they just create a lot more trauma for the skin, so I don't recommend them. Where this one has the real individual needles, and then stainless steel is gonna be a little more sanitary than versus titanium or the other forms of metal. This is the one I recommend. This is the Angel Kiss one. I've used this for years, and I've recommended it to many people. I got a lot of people into this. It's a great, a very affordable, little roller and I will quickly note you know I will cover this more in the actual demo video but you don't want to be hanging on to this for six months right but you want to use this four to six times cleaning it properly in between uses and then disposing of it safely in a sharps container the third kind of tool that you can use for microneedling would be to use a derma stamp I don't have one here but again look for stainless steel it's gonna be a little bit more sanitary versus titanium a lot of people like the pens because you don't have to replace your pen every four to six uses you could just keep buying the new cartridges they're a little bit more sanitary and you don't have to kind of clean between uses but the derma roller is more studied they're both great tools for microneedling and it's really totally up to you which one you wanna use. Neither one is better or worse, just pros and cons here. Now in deciding whether home microneedling is for you, it's really important to one, do extensive research. Um, you want to approach this like a professional. Again, I've linked my microneedling supplies and favorite tools. I'm also gonna, however, link some of the protocols from the group. This will be the printable versions of the protocol, so definitely go to the actual group for additional information. Again, there's so much information in our guides in the Skincare and Beauty 101 community. It's all free, it's all to help you guys, but I will link the printable version of the protocol just so you can kind of have a good understanding of all the tools and sanitation and everything you're gonna need because it's really important to take this seriously. You know, this is a medical treatment you are creating micro injuries into the skin. You know, there is a risk of infection and a risk of scarring. You have to do this properly. You need to approach it just like a professional would. Um, or, you know, home microneedling probably is not for you. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. Um, I will cover more in the demo again. You know, I will talk more about the steps and the sanitation um, and, and the pre and post care. 
I just wanted to make sure I did this kind of 101 or this kind of general overview before we got into the actual demo. It's no, by no means a deep dive into the science of microneedling. It's again, it's a 101, it's the basics. I can definitely do more content really delving into the science of microneedling and how it works in the skin and the wound healing cascade and how to combine different treatment modalities. There's so much more that I cover at a much deeper level. I just wanted to kind of just sit down and spur of the moment here and kind of get this general overview done before we get into any of the demos. But hopefully I really impressed upon you everything that's involved here. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I do have to go to, need to get to bed. I'm exhausted and I feel like my brain is mush. Um, so comment down below, please let me know if you have done a microneedling treatment before, you know, whether it's at home it's or, or with a professional. And again, please let me know in the comments as well, you know, what overviews and what demos you would like me to do next, um, whether it's mesotherapy, microcurrent, uh, chemical peels, whatever you guys want to see first, I am totally down to do. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Um, please feel free to keep up with me on Instagram and the Facebook group in between now and the next video. I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments. Bye!